What's good everybody, it's your Julie Slater Hype, TV sound system, like, comment, share and subscribe and welcome back to another edition of the new thing what we're doing behind the boxes talking to sound man about the sound system industry but away from that there's other things going on in and around the industry that we want to talk about and the guests I've got with me right now I normally start with how do I introduce this person <laughs> but I check the levels for 12 years on TV sound system this guy alongside Marky G are the most people I've interviewed over the 12 years right from the beginning they was there for TV sound system and right up to the present moment they're still here and that's why I invited them into my house <laughs> Any, anybody can't just come to my house and knock my door or anything you know yeah. so with honor and respect Zylo ecstasy 4x4 inside the building how are you doing? good man good to be back it's been a while isn't it? well the day what day is it today? Uh, it is the Sunday the 29th of September 29th of September it's mid afternoon ish mm. The reason why we're doing it right now is because there's a big match going Pre game has to be Manchester United, Tottenham Oxford. Yeah. Now, if you know, it's the man you guy. If you know me, I'm always going to wear my strip, you know. <laughs> I was thinking that, I don't really want to. Taking a piss? Yeah, I don't really want to do that. I was already in my house and I'm going to rub it in as well. <laughs> but it's really good to have you right about now. Um, what's going on with, with the vibes right now? Because if I go, we're going to go back and forth. Okay. Um, First of all, ecstasy. Yeah, yeah. The last time we kind of spoke, I think it was at the Heritage. Yes. And we were speaking about various different things going on. But, but what since was we then, leading up to? There was an event coming up, weren't there? There was an event coming up. I'm not sure what the event is. But even if we fast forward, because mm. there's so much things that's happened, and in the current mm. place where you are right now, we, we, we confidently can say that you are the front man for ecstasy regarding Mike dealing with the crowd. How are you finding it? Because we always knew that Ape Zylo could do it, but he was always in the background, seeming wow. to kind of put the dots together, but I'm now glad, you're right I'm on the front you, of the stage. I'm glad you had that confidence, because I never, I, I was saying to a Bridget yesterday, if you'd have said to me, even five years ago, mm. like if, I, if, if, some, if some mysterious hooded person had stepped out of a dark alleyway and said, you're going to be the MC for XC4Y4 in the next five years, and then stepped up again, I'd be yeah. like, you don't, what the, <laughs> <laughs> they don't know what they're going on about. Yeah. What are you talking about? I'm still very unexpected. I kind of, it's a bit weird. Like I almost like look at it third person because it's kind of don't feel like it's me doing it. Mm. Which sounds weird to say, but because yeah. that's not my, I never, I've never had the um, inclination or the, the, I've never necessarily wanted to be in that space. Does that make yeah. sense? I never yeah. spent my years around the sound gearing up towards me potentially being the MC. Okay. So, it's all out of necessity and total honesty, mm -hmm. just through the love and the passion for doing the thing that yeah. it is that we love. And obviously, I think it's also like a reluctance to, to almost let go, if that makes sense. That mm -hmm. sounds a little bit more dramatic than yeah, I intended, yeah. but the point being is that you build something for so long, like... I ain't done with this yet, so yeah, yeah. all right, cool. Let's just let us we'll just do it then. Mm -hmm. And because I'm quite comfortable speaking publicly anyway, whether it be you know conferences, seminars, anything like that, like I'm not. You know, sometimes you do a group activity mm -hmm. and you say, "Who's a spokesperson?" Yeah. If everybody's sitting looking at each other, I'll just go, "All right, I'll do it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. mind." Well, so, as I was as I was saying, like because it's it, it's a good look. Um, I think you're doing extremely well. There's a lot of Respect. positive feedback Respect. from it. Um, a lot of people are saying, yo, I should have just done it from a long time ago. Um, from the outside looking in, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, re I'm not surprised, but I am surprised. Okay. And I say it in terms of like, like, like for you then, for instance. Yeah. Shout out, reach out to Prince, Yardy K, fantastic MCs, course, gone on to do other things and that. When was the moment where you thought, Holy shit, I'm gonna have to do this myself, you know. Where was there a conversation between you and Mark where it was like Do you know what, right? Yo. Again, so you know like how I said it was out of necessity. Mm. So if you think about it from a timeline point of view now, yeah? So um after the first clash with willpower in Coventry, which mm -hmm. I, I don't know, I, I think it's kids that are doing this thing now. I'm sure that was 2022, summer of 22. And so shortly after that. You know the the sound changed the makeup mm. of the sound changed you had to step away for his own personal reasons and so like i said me and mark was like well we ain't done because and it's all right then put it like this let's say you are completely 
committed to building a house mm -hmm. and then you're you've got all of the blueprints you've got all of the team on standby everything's ready to go to build this house and then after the first phase your um project manager walks out and is like i can't be asked with this anymore mm -hmm. not saying that that's how it happened but let's just hypothetically say that's the case they walk out and like, i can't be asked with this anymore mm -hmm. you've got everything that you need to be able to see the project through so do you say well forget building the house and you just say well let's just finish building the house mm -hmm. and i say that to put it into context what we had envisioned in terms of the kind of mid to short term plan of what are we doing with the sound in this day and age yeah, yeah, yeah. we put things in motion mm -hmm. willpower beat because if you remember we were supposed to clash them the june and then do the return leg in sheffield in yeah. october mm -hmm. obviously the sound changed in between that we also then, and again, to come back to my original point, we also then had the dance in Coventry, the top striker dance. Yeah. So, we had a dance with Willpower, um, Yardi left, the top striker dance was already in the works. It transpired that the Willpower dance was to come before the top striker dance. Had it been the other way around, we'd have still kept that date oh, okay. yeah, then yeah, yeah, when yeah. it was. But mm -hmm. he was like, you know what, it's better that we just recalibrate and move it to next year mm -hmm. so to go back to answering the direct question it was born out of necessity because it was like well I don't want to pull out of the top striker dance because we've been gearing up for that as well mm -hmm. so since we already know what we're looking to do for it I'll just go and do it then yeah does that make sense mm -hmm. like you know like I said the blueprints are already there the building team is already here to do the build. They mm -hmm. just need to follow the plan and have somebody show them how to yeah, solve. Yeah. yeah, so it was just yeah. like, all right, then, well, let's just do it. So we did it, mm -hmm. and the, the the feedback was well received. And then, you know, there's a couple of bookings still in the pipeline, and you think to yourself, mm -hmm. okay, well, let's just we just do them as well. And yeah. again, party is different because we've been playing radio and we've been doing that for them things for how many years? You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if you've been playing sound for a certain amount of time, even if your MC is not there. Depending on the kind of function as it is, if you're a capable selector, you can do that anyway. Yeah, you don't yeah, necessarily yeah. always uh -huh. need your MC. Yeah. So the nickel party, them and the nickel But you have been, and another thing, that's another thing as well, because there has been over the years, even mm. since like, 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 with you being with Ecstasy, mm. there's also mm. been some major events where you've just gone as Zylo from Ecstasy and okay. dealt with the thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those events, they kind of, maybe probably because you don't put them out as much. Um, but there's been a few times where I've seen them like, oh wow, you, you're on that bill, or you've gone and played mm -hmm. there, and I see you all suited and booted, like you're in some, <laughs> some, some different kind of event, like rather than the class thing. So yeah. I know that completely uh, um, being able to do it, the job that you're doing right now is absolutely fine. Um, we're going to just go like where Ecstasy is right now. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's Ecstasy right now, and are you happy with the situation? Oh, God, yeah. Um, and, you know, it's cliche the creator don't give more than you can bear any and it's hindsight is twenty twenty. so in looking at the reactions that we've got from what we have done mm -hmm. I'm going to be biased and say yeah we're in the we're in the you know we, things are going well would I be more comfortable if we just had a bad MC and I didn't have to be probably yeah mm -hmm. but you know what I'm not gonna complain with the load because actually how I'm able to feel comfortable with it as well is, and you'll know this as well as a selector, you know when you have, you know, alright then, let's say you send for a dub plate, you, you, have, you pick the reading for it, you know how you want the lyrics, you're waiting for the dub, you, the dub plate arrives and you listen to it, mm. and you get that, you feel, you'll know if it, you'll know if you like it straight away because you listen to it and you'll get that feeling that you thought you might get when you thought of the idea to voice the dub. Mm. So there's an intention behind it anyway. So when we play now, that same intention when you voice the dub, we're able to, it almost comes across more because, because we're the selectors them that have put the dub together, mm -hmm. when the dub comes, it doesn't, you don't have to rely on somebody else to translate that feeling to the crowd in terms of, yo, this is why I bought, yeah, am yeah. I making sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so when we're performing now, certain little chip, like for example, um, we played at uh, Ukan Buster Dance the other day. Mm -hmm. and That's the next topic. You're right. <laughs> so we played the, um, the Bunty and Shabba, which mm -hmm. we played a fair few times, but it almost feels like people are hearing it for the first time. And mm -hmm. I attribute that to, because I know that I have a personal kind of weight and value to the song, 
I feel like I've been able to put it across in a way that it hasn't been put across before and okay. people have noticed it more. Yeah. So like I say, in mm. that regard now, what we're doing now, it feels like we're actually finally able to, like the limiters come okay. off the car and we're able to push <clears throat> it. We're pushing it how it's supposed to. It feels like, yeah, all right, I saw it for you. Yeah, man. I saw it for you. I yeah. want to know. Uh -huh. We're driving it the way okay. how it was intended to be. Well, that's, 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 that, that's good. And I kind of, I kind of, at the same time, knew that was the plan and, and how I can see it because I just knew that when I heard that you were going to step up front, I said, it's all good. So I don't know what he's doing. He's, he's about this. You know what I mean? A lot of people then, before we go into who can bust the dance, right. um, let's just be honest, man. There's so many people, on, not so many people, God. but there's a few people on socials. They have you down as the geek. Oh, God. The sound system geek. <laughs> That's fine. I got no problem with that. <laughs> you know, there's a few people, and it's not in a bad way. It's like, I think it's just because you're very knowledgeable, you're very active, you're very, you're, you're very jo on job. Okay. So we are on job and teams. Okay. And then our people say, yeah, man, so I know, man, he's a, he's a geek, man, he's a geek when it comes to this thing. How do you feel about that? That's fine with me, bro. <laughs> I, listen, we was talking off camera and I said to you, you see, anything that I'm invested in, mm. I go, and I have to be aware of how I am with it because if I allow myself, I'll just completely, do you get what I mean, delve into it. Mm -hmm. You said, again, we was having a nickel joke up there, you was like, you love your football, innit? And I was like, you know what, I don't mean to as much as I do, mm. but I just, that's just how my brain works. Yeah. Once I'm into something, mm -hmm. I and then, need and to know I, what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, and and you get okay, what I mean. so when, so like I said, I'm gonna go back in just a little bit. Uh, the final one on the being the, the front man for ecstasy. Mm -hmm. How we find it pressure wise and nerves is is, that, is, is as, do you find it nervous? And do you feel like you're under pressure now? Because if you're gonna uh -huh. do what you do, which is uh -huh. go go full in on uh -huh. something, uh -huh. plus everyday life, and when you're taking sound system thing as serious as you guys take it. Uh -huh. Is there any form of pressure in there? And if there is, how do you deal with it? It's it's more of an internal pressure in terms of not primarily not wanting to make a fool of myself. Let's just be real about it. <laughs> like I'm always thinking to myself, as long as I don't look and sound like an idiot, <laughs> it should be okay. Uh. And kind of being slightly arrogant about it. Like I'm not the type. Like, one thing with me, I don't like. I can always <laughs> tell when it when there is. A, you have certain MCs that act like uh, and then like they perform in a way that emulates how they think an MC should be yeah and like, yeah. you don't always get the impression that that's how they're just performing this character because they think that's how an MC should go on mm. I don't like that don't that's there's no integrity in that for me yeah I think all of the top MCs they just they are their own person but they're just more out there with it yeah, yeah, in yeah. the moment does that mm -hmm. make sense yeah like i feel like squingy was the way how he was that was his actual natural charismatic personality but he just he added certain qualities to it to perform yeah it. same with fire links same with mataran same with anyone he could panta all of them man probably are the way how we perceive them in a clash but it's just dialed back a bit if you sat in their personal yeah, space yeah, yeah. they'll still run the joke Trooper's still got bad word. <laughs> like everybody's the way how it, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So like I say, I um, don't put an act on, so I feel comfortable already anyway. So I know as long as I don't go out there and make a fool of myself, i.e. be telling people about their mumma and all this kind of stuff that don't come naturally to me. Cause I'm not, again, it's, it's about you have to be yourself and mm, people can yeah, yeah, see yeah. if you're not. If, man, how are you that man? Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. you just can tell, you can smell it, anyway, mm. especially as a sound system fan. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, it's more internal pressure. Number one, like I said, to not make myself feel like an idiot. <laughs> but no, uh, people I look at my wife, I say, I hear it, husband, that. Yeah. But no, uh, and I also massively <laughs> don't want to let down the weight of responsibility to my team yeah. members. I don't want that we've been spending the past three months working on this thing and then <sighs> we go out on stage and choke. Yeah. And that's all of that time's gone down. It's all that, that's the pressure. Uh -huh. It's not necessarily will I get booed or it's clash. I've been in the crowd, mm -hmm. so I can understand, like, if we're to go and perform and get a boo, I might feel a way about it, but actually, I've been in the crowd, and I'm a sound man, so something in that, yeah, there's something yeah. I'm missing here, mm -hmm. so when I, it's time for me to come off, before I come back on, I better figure that out, Yeah. that's not pressure, that's just the game, does that make sense? That's just the game, 100%, that's man. just the yeah, game, yeah. the pressure is, have you 
you know, are you doing the justice to all of the preparation that's gone in it? Mm. Are you doing justice by all the people that have come out to see you go yeah, out good? Yeah. That's the pressure. When people come and travel with you, you know, dog, you're after perform because mm -hmm. otherwise they're going to go away thinking, they ain't feeling bad yeah. for you. Yeah, okay. And it's yeah. really hard it's bad for you're, them you're, you're on exactly the same. That is my form of pressure. Like, one of the things is like, but I cannot afford to make myself look like an idiot. Facts. Because if that happens, right, mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna be extremely upset. <laughs> and, and that's, that's because what, I can't look like falling for exactly. the only for people. And when you've got top of top MCs yeah. who are on job and can make joke out to you or this and that, right. it can so throw you off track. You know, that's super, where it's gonna come on to man. next as well. Because I'm a, I'm a, me love Ronjo. Look at me, yeah, shout yeah, out to yeah. I've been like that all the way through school. Right, and the reason why I always bring that up is, to me, anybody out there with a sharp bass, they might go, really, because you have to build up a certain resilience, any. You're the butt of all of the jokes, so you're either going to cry about it, you're going to fight about it, or you're going to give joke back. Mm -hmm. I'm the give joke back guy, yeah. so I feel okay being on stage. My man, come tell me, you can't come tell me, any, tell me some me a geek, tell me some me, 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 you know what I mean? Yeah, Anything, yeah. It, um, it's cool. I run worse jokes with my bridge then. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> when we're ready for send with one and then yeah. now, you know what I mean? Like it gets rough, so I'm cool with that. Yeah. Does that make sense? So it's like, yeah, you build up that resilience, and you, like you said, it's more about okay. As long as people have the faith that yeah, this guy ain't embarrassing us. Actually, he's doing all he's right. Doing all that's right. that's why. Like it, and it sounds again, it sounds arrogant to say. Yeah. I would play. It, we got Jimmy Smith coming up. One of the most Viciousest man in the game when it comes to cussing people, he is serious on it. Mm. But that's my kind of banter, bro. Like I'm that yeah. them bargain that, 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 that makes a that makes a, a, an, a an exciting dance as right. well. Man, trust me, it's gonna be crazy. TV sound system, Zylo's inside the building. Um, we're gonna move on. Who can boss the dance? Oh, talking yes. about speech as well. There's a okay, there's right. a there's a speech that you did. You know, I think it was at the World Power Dance where you was about man in front of Van and Ting. <laughs> if I could find the audio clip of that, or if you got it, send it to me because <laughs> I swear, I when I was driving and I listened to that, I nearly had to pull over. You know, because it was again when we're talking about natural, natural um, presentation and yeah. just not. I don't even know if you thought about it, you just said it. It, it, it was just so natural, it was absolutely hilarious. But let's fast forward, who can boss the dance? Yeah, yeah. That took place a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, if we've got some footage, we're going to try and put that in there now. How was that for you? Because I was, was in London. London was a vibe. Yeah, yeah so it was good. Was it? You know what, right? It was good, and I, 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 I had to hail up Juxica. It's been genuinely, I think we figured it out, It was. it's been like something like. 15 years or something like that since we played in London from a wow. from a no, well not just played in London but that kind of session yeah does that yeah, make yeah, sense yeah. Uh -huh. pull the box and that kind of crowd like that sound yeah. system environment um it's been that long since we've last played down there so to go and and I I, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's it, I don't know how anybody else feels about it it might be like a Badlands perspective potentially possibly I don't know but I feel like London sound system crowd, their ears are tuned slightly differently. Not in a bad way. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you can go, you go to Europe, they like a Treasure Isle kind of vibe. You get, the, you know, every mm. place has their vibe, any. London, they're, they're connoisseurs. So, what, so, so what, what would London? What would London vibe would be like? You, you, it would be. How can I describe it? Good question, you know, to mm. really put it into words. It's uh, it's it's, the, it's, a, it's a bit looser term, but it's a big man thing. Like if you want, if from a sound system perspective, mm -hmm. if you want to impress that kind of crowd, you have to you have to know tune. You have to show that you know tune. And you have to you have to play in a way that enables them to get into what yeah. it is that you do. Does yeah, that make sense? I agree. They I don't agree. like you to play too fast. Mm -hmm. They do have a kind of a preference for like roots and vocal and. There is a pre I sense that there's a preference in that style. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I think that might just be born out of obviously the big sound in from down there, the Cuxons and the Saxons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the That's style. what I think yeah, as well. Yeah, I yeah. think London. I, um, for how I would describe it is mm. London is a. It's like London people go out and they're going out to be entertained. Yes. And so you better entertain us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it could be the most e simplest song, but if yeah. you put it across. In the right, in the right way, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, gonna yeah, say yeah. bad song. Because some people can't put a good song 
Across? Yes. And it's a good song, but you just didn't put it across yeah. properly. So that's where what? London, where you go, and you say something and blah blah. And you could be the in, simplest song, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you yeah. put it across right, and you're entertaining them. I've done from there always. What, what you just said there is a very pertinent point because while we was in the dance, mm. so we played our first, we played our first round, and like anywhere we go, always I always make a point of making sure that there's at least a a, a, a path, a road for the first round, right? Mm -hmm. Got a, a, an idea of. Either how it's gonna come across, how you're gonna start, what is your your focal point of your round, or whatever it might be, mm. it's built around that element. Any, so we we went and played the first round, and it was one of the um, it was one of the Saxon man them. I realise now that came mm. over when Mark and G stand up so, and if I would like this right in the middle, and he said, you know, no, if you don't have to listen to me, you know, but you know, I play some bad tune, you know, mm. but they're going over people's heads. The, the, it's like they're playing a bit too quick okay. and not, not mm. pitch quick like they, they're going before people can realise yeah, what they're yeah, listening yeah. to now in a normal setting sometimes people come over and you know what it's like as a DJ people go oh you should play this or you should have done that and you're like yeah alright but it resonated and I think because of the, I was aware of the fact that we're playing to a crowd that we don't usually get to play to mm. I was more receptive to, to what yeah, yeah, yeah. feedback and that sort of thing and it and it, uh, it when he said it, I was like, mm. and then when I watched the the, I think um, intimate love played after us, and then Sabrin played last, and then when I've watched how they played, I thought, you know, if I threw in my talk, I kind of get it now. Mm. So if you notice, if you listen to it, our first round was played at, but I'm yeah, and then the second and round after we kind of slowed round? it down. Yeah, is that when you, you came on with the the Berries and Shaggy? Is it Berries and no, Shaggy? That, uh, no, Sanchez and Shaggy Sanchez. was the third round. Okay, but the the, um, the second round is where we came. The, it, that's where you, we had like the Chris Martin Mama okay. and we played. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And it was it's so because good. I haven't. I've just been down yeah, and out an audio so There's yeah. a bit of lots come out, but. Mm -hmm. If if you've listened to it, you'll notice a change in pace of the delivery of how we was putting the tunes. Then mm. from the first round and to the rest of the dance, there's a difference. We play that more of like a juggling pace in the first round. It was like bam, 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 mm. and just the sound them are coming and the vibe is building and it sounds yeah. good. Mm -hmm. But when the general said that to me, I was like, okay. And then I said to Mark, here what we do. This is that we decided on what we was gonna play the second round. And I said, but well, let's just like try and play on a bit of a level, mm -hmm. you get me? So we took our time and made sure, we start with a Mavado, in bringing the crowd, and then start to lick the song them and just give them more breathing space. And mm -hmm. it worked, and it worked. And so again, to go back to your original question, I enjoyed the dance because I feel like, especially where we are now, with, with me being in this new role as the front man and that, it was a good learning experience because actually mm -hmm. I got a lot from it in terms of, okay, that's what this crowd want. Blam, and it, it, it opened my mind up to a lot of different stuff that I used to perceive differently. Mm -hmm. But now having played on that dance, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now. Like, big up Chalice, the Rasta will play slow. Uh -huh. I get the playing slow now. I get it, bro. I get it. I'm not just true, you're just whole. Mm -hmm. I, I get it. It has it met. No, I can cuss him because he cussed me. Like, Did oh, you hear it? Clark it. Right. You know, no. I hear the audio. Huh? I hear it in the Chalice. <laughs> I hear it. You have a friend. You're all right. You're retired, but now I kick you. But you hear it. You cheek it. Yeah. Anyway, to hear that man. But yeah, it's, it was. A, it was. A, um, because I know Empire, but mm. I've been big with myself. Intimate love. Mm -hmm. I've got a chance to meet with with those guys. But yo, they were they were the vibes, man. I really enjoyed. It. I haven't listened to the audio from start to finish. Or I haven't seen any. I've just seen yeah. clips. Okay. Okay. So um. So good listen. It's on YouTube. the reason when I says um I made a pause on on. Uh, the UK sound system group. I was like, mm -hmm. yo, who did Buster Dance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was quite equal. Like everybody mm -hmm. was saying, you know what, man, them did Buster Dance, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, so shout out to the promoter for that one. So wow. remember what it is: like, comment, share, and subscribe. The year has been a fantastic year for ecstasy. It's been all. It's been all right. <laughs> we need to talk about one of your main events: jerk and wine. Uh huh. Movie settings. <laughs> it's looking like right about now. Um, tell us about the concept. Why did you decide to do it? And, and just give us a big a breakdown of, of, of where it is right now and how we did to start out. It was, it was, so the brainchild of it really, shouts out to, to Marky and the, the, the rest of the team. Um, it was a bit of a convenience, but also like a spotting in the gap of the market. And mm -hmm. again, I was having a conversation the other day, like, I feel like in the UK, there are, dancer exists in two spaces, right? So you've got dancer, like, 
whether that be sound system, whether it be, you know, like your round robins or you've got the authentic like Jamaican dancer mm -hmm. and then you have if you want to put a different label on it, your bashman. Mm -hmm. And to explain that, it's dancehall that exists in not dancehall spaces. Does that make sense? Yeah. And there is a distinct difference between... So you'll have people that love dancehall but won't go to a dance because they don't yeah. want... They don't so want it's more... Would, it, would, it, would, you, would you class it as more of a commercial, uptown kind of vibes then? Yes and no. And the reason why I go into the explanation is because in between those two kind of groups there's people that slip through the net in the sense of people that probably used to go dance but don't want to go dance anymore don't really go out anymore but love the vibes mm -hmm. you got people that don't want to go to the dance hall but love dance hall you got people that don't want to go to the commercial but love that so there's a big bit in the middle where there's people just not doing anything mm -hmm. they're just listening to hot 92 or playing mixes on soundcloud or just doing their own little thing mm -hmm. the daytime thing makes it accessible because you don't have to worry about oh, who's going to be there, is it dangerous, da da da, da. Mm -hmm. Being in town makes it accessible as well because not just logistically and infrastructure wise and all of that sort of stuff. So we felt like it was a, an event that captured people that used to come to dance that don't anymore. People that want to go out but it's difficult for them to, kids or whatever. It's just, it's a bit, it was a bit of a reflection of us sitting down and thinking about what stage of life we're at as well. And you know, as a sound system, especially when you've been active as long as we have, you you grow with an audience, and mm -hmm. so it's like, okay, well, there are people that used to party with us that don't come out to party anymore. How can we cater to them? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then if you look into it and you notice how the trends in how people are partying nowadays is changing, mm -hmm. actually, a lot of it is going to the daytime, the nighttime economy. It's not just in our culture. It's dying across the board. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. What used to be clubs is now bars now. People don't really go clubbing anymore. They'll go to a bar and there'll be a DJ in the bar and they stay in the bar. The bar closes up while everybody goes on. Mm -hmm. So, again, put it together. Saw a, basically a gap in the market. Saw a niche and was like, okay, UKG brunch works. Um, you know, we're seeing all types of other types of like daytime and brunch events. There's not one that's catering and geared to dance on and reggae in mm -hmm. an authentic way, though. Yeah. So going back to what you were saying about it being. Um, uh, commercial the idea of it is that it is commercially accessible but the delivery of it is authentic so when you come you might feel like and it's being said and this is disclaimer these are not hype skis <laughs> people come and they go why too much white people there you know well that's a you problem because actually yeah. the people that do come after 10 15 minutes, they don't business by the white people, then again, because it's a vibe. Mm -hmm. You're hearing the tune that, like, properly hearing the tune, and it's not just a heads high and a freaking, you know, what I mean, zim zim and yeah, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah your it's song. Songs, yeah, songs beating. I'm talking patwa, Tony Mataran's coming on. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. authentic. It's authentic, yeah. You're getting proper food. Mm -hmm. We play, and then, and then what makes it then the commercial side, then we, we play games, there's prizes, mm -hmm. it's interactive. You know what I mean? It's like I said, it's accessible. So we just we try to create something that just captures that bit of yeah, the market that yeah. I felt wasn't really being. And you know what? Just, sorry to call you, but do you see that gap where you're talking about? Mm -hmm. I think there's there's a, there's a part of it is, is age as well, God, and I said also, especially with what you was doing, because if you look nineties. When ecstasy came out, mm -hmm. ecstasy were hot at juggling, you know. Mm -hmm. The juggling scene, you had locked mm -hmm. was that regularly. Three, four, five times a week. As back then. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was, I think, you can correct me if I was wrong, mm -hmm. it got to a point where dog plays coming in, clash I go on, mm -hmm. ecstasy's up there. Mm -hmm. And I think you kind of, um, I don't want to say turned your back. No, no, no. You kind of moved into the clash era mm -hmm. and not everybody followed you. So that gap yeah, there, they just yeah. stayed where they was because it was like, well, where the fuck are we going to go now? Because yeah. Exorcist is clashing some bad man down, so that ain't really our team. Yes. But we fucked with them still. And then it was that, and then it came like full circle to where you are now. And then mm -hmm. when you do it, I think a lot of people are like, 
and the ecstasy, the coming back, and it's Mr. Vegas, and it's Tony Matarone, yeah, and like yeah. you said, it's authentic. Yes. You haven't That's gone and come with something yeah, we're not crazy. Coming, so yeah. I think that gap there, I think it's why it's worked and why probably not everybody could do that. I don't think everybody could put on an authentic um, event what you've done. I mean, we're talking numbers, man. What? Yeah. yeah Four, yeah. so five hundred, or uh, yeah, it's I, looking the, massive. The average per event there tends to be at least four a year. Yeah. If we take away the outliers like the, the Mr. Vegas, the festival, and if we take out the Mataran events, on average, the attendance is anywhere between. If I had to put a number on it, it mm. averages at like four hundred. Yeah. Per, per event mm -hmm. which is, is good that's, it's that's good decent numbers, that's especially decent. in the daytime thing mm -hmm. um, with Vegas we had I don't want to get this too far wrong I'm certain we were close to um, 13-1400 people mm. Mataran last year we had just shy of 800 Mataran okay. this year was just shy of 500 okay. so there was a little bit of a drop mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. but no, no, no. and we've got look, obviously other events are taking place yeah, and blah, yeah. blah 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 but it's a, it's a massive look yeah. uh, future for Jerk and Wine 2025 who are we getting up inside the place? Huh? <laughs> I'm not going to lift the lid too much but we're looking to follow up on the so the first thing is that Jerk and Wine brunch mm -hmm. is the Regular event, if that makes sense. Yeah. Jack and Wine Festival is what we're trying to be the flagship. Oh, okay. So, Jack yeah. and Wine Festival is the big rotted. Jack and Wine Brunch is the yeah, man, let's go and hold the mm. vibes. Um, so, Jack and Wine Festival next year is we're cooking up a little something still. We're trying to follow up the Mr. Vegas thing. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. We're cooking on that one. Okay. That should well, be. Well, we a good need deal. to have the exclusive. Once you know the pen and paper, all the top dots and ticks have crossed, yeah, yeah, yeah. give me a call. Yeah, 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 we yeah, announce yeah. it right here on yeah. TV Sound System. Um, away from that, um, another thing mm -hmm. that I haven't done with you is the top five. Right. Now, if you've been watching the channel, you know that I'm doing a top five with uh, various DJs, anybody in the industry, just saying who are the top five artists that you're listening to right now. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't have to be brand new artists and it can be any genre. Mm -hmm. So, um, who are the five artists that's currently on your playlist right now? Okay, well, I'm glad you put that last bit in on your playlist because that makes it a little bit easier yeah. because I was thinking about it before. Okay, so. And it's not of all okay. times, just yeah, five yeah, that just, I'm listening to right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so for um, a minute, a good couple of years, um, I've been there's a British artist um, called Knox, like okay. Sonic and Knuckles, but not Knuckles, just yeah. Knox from London. Wicked independent artist, uh -huh. rapper, but he, you can you he can hear that he's a musician. Mm -hmm. He arra the, these arrangements, the use of instruments. He's the only. It's very. It's got a very kind of like jazz influenced. Uh -huh. He's of African heritage, but there's the. There's the kind of street kind of dance art influence in there as well. He's mm. a little bit of patois and he, yeah, man, he's he's, he's waving, okay. produces himself, plays multiple instruments. Um, bad bad artist. So Knox, I've been he's been on my playlist for a minute. Um, I rate Jay Kwan, the young dance art artist. Okay, it's got a vibe. It's got a wicked wicked vibe. I don't know what it is. I can't pinpoint what it is that makes him compelling but it's bad mm -hmm. his inflections the the use of his voice because he's got one of them high kind of nowadays artist kind of voices but the way he uses his voice wicked and he's a lyricist as mm -hmm. a bad artist he, I, I i can't say that he's got a body of work out there i could be wrong i try to keep trying to keep my finger on the pulse but what he comes out with rate him mm -hmm. jane Kwan. yeah um leela nobody can tell me nothing about leela mm -hmm. bad 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 just like, again, artists, and mm. it, you can hear the musician in her, and she's a songwriter as well. And yeah. but also, she's a she's a as a singer, she has a bit of an unorthodox style in the sense of she's got huskiness to her voice, and her range is I wouldn't say it's limited, but it lives in a certain space. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. But it's also versatile as well, um, and just just when yeah, there's there's something about the sonics of her voice that it's it's instrument like it just it embeds in the music and you can immerse yourself in it. I rate love Leela, rate mm -hmm. Leela. So Leela, so when we go no Nox, Jaquan, Leela, yeah. um Massacre. Okay. Massacre's leading the pack to me at the moment. Yeah. Massacre's leading the pack to me at the moment. And what solidified it for me two albums ago, that four three eight album. 
baddest thing that's come out as a dancehall album in God knows how. The last album as a dancehall album to give me that this is proper was um, the Mavado album, the one that he's put out, the, mm -hmm. the David Brooks album. Yeah. Yeah. That and the 438 give me the same feel. They're just well put together, bodies of work, where you have to sit back and go, if I wasn't into dancehall and somebody gave me the CD to listen to, I would still like it. Mm. Bad, bad, bad artist. So, Massacre. And then, I think finally, um, so, I think, I, I, I have to give an honourable mate. It's a difficult one. I mean, I'm kind of like, I like to see myself as a bit. I'm like, just sitting there patiently, like, yeah. Because it's, it's a who do I put? Yo, it's a strong four, you know. Who do I put? Um, let me give an honourable mention first. Yeah. There's a there's a Belgian-born French-speaking artist called Stromae. S T R O M A E. Okay. Very different left field. Don't ask me how I discovered this stuff. I don't know, but I genuinely can't understand the word that it says. It's all in French, but you can he again. You can hear the musician in him. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. You can hear the African influence. You can hear the Congolese influence. You can hear the little bit of dance. You can hear the trap and the rap. You can hear him using the French. It's just encapsulating. And then I think what did it for me was. Um, you know, sometimes you can go down a bit of a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. Came across one of his music videos where it was transcribed and translated into English. And that's when I then thought, and then I seen through reading mm -hmm. the lyrics, I was like, rah, that's a really good freaking song. He's got one song in particular that's very experimental in terms of sound, but it's speaking about his, he's almost like, um, speaking from the perspective of being depression. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. Just really captivating. But he's my honourable mention. Um, I think if I had to put the last one on there, I still listen to a lot of Buster Rhymes. Okay, and you know, there you go. That's why I'm waiting patiently. You know. I'm Rhymes. saying this brother, if this brother does not say Buster Rhymes, I still listen to a lot of Buster Rhymes. I and was always a thank you. I went, I went, I went, I went. I went overly impressed by his last album. To be uh -huh. honest, it didn't really hold me like like Extinction Level Event Two, but. Mm -hmm. Buster's my guy, man. Yeah. Buster is my a bad, a bad artist, that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I wait for if anything I come from the smoke, where may I see where they might try to put fire underneath him. We'll just we'll judge that on its own. Yeah. For now, yeah, Buster's my Buster, man. Well, there is a top five. I finally got it. <laughs> Dino's top five I super wanted. And I also wanted to have this conversation because, like I said, it was towards the end of the year. And he, uh, Ecstasy, oh, check the levels. Go all the way back. Scroll through TV sound system and look at the very yes, first man. times where we sat down, no pun intended around the round table. Yeah, <laughs> not for real. And yeah, we yeah. were doing, and, and they supported everything so much. Shout out to Yard K, shout out to Prince. I've had, I've watched the journey, man. And the journey's been crazy. And it's really cool to have you um, on a solo one, because I know when I talk to Marky G, it's going to be a totally different conversation <laughs> with everything what he's doing right about now. But um, we're going to wrap it up. Future 2025, what's mm -hmm. the most important thing that you would want people to know about ecstasy? It's a good question. Um, just I think really it's 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 about for, I guess to put it into a word, it's it's a legacy thing now, isn't it? Like I'm working for our name now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm working, so not I'm, but what we're doing now mm -hmm. is all about at whatever point we decide, you know what, I've had enough of this. I think I've had my fun now. Whatever, mm -hmm. whenever, whatever day that is, when that happens, people can go, see them, man. Yeah. Does that make sense? You know, like how you know, like how you everybody in their little zone that the, you list the sounds that yeah, man. When me the Depan Road, that them sound there. Mm -hmm. That's we gotta be in there. Yeah. So when that day comes, when we say yeah, you know, I've had enough. Everybody can go. Yeah, man. Respect. I'm gonna mm -hmm. do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. When you're as active as ecstasy, mm. I don't. I guess it's not a day that you're looking for, is it? Yeah. Or or do you think there's gonna be a time where like do you actually think like you know what I'm gonna 
trying to make it make sense now. Is um clearly you're not thinking about doing no. it. But, oh, but are you thinking about it? Well, you know what so, I mean, I mean, see, it's something that you you don't focus on, but you're aware of it because ultimately, at the end of the day, like life still carries on in it. So, mm-hmm. like anything, inevitably you're gonna come at a point where either you can't anymore, you don't have the time anymore, you don't want to anymore, or mm-hmm. it's not practical anymore, or it's just not the thing anymore. Mm-hmm. There's probably some garage MC out there that was the baddest thing on the road when garage was the thing and garage ain't the thing anymore. And mm-hmm. where is he? Yeah. He probably didn't want to stop it, but now the team moves to Grime and you're not a Grime MC, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So it could be that. But the point being is that, like, and I'm sure I could speak for Mark as well, but I speak for myself. I play for fulfillment, I play for passion, I don't play for. You know, reputation or money or, mm-hmm. and I say I don't pay for reputation. That's probably a bit um, contradictory considering what I just said in mm-hmm. terms of legacy. But like, I don't play because I'm looking for f- the adoration of people. Mm-hmm. I want what we do to be revered and to say those guys were capable. Like they actually could do the team. Mm-hmm. Yes, but I play for fulfillment. Play for because I love to play and it's something that gives me joy so the minute it doesn't feel like that value is worth as much to me anymore it's probably at the point at which I'll be like do you know what I think we've had our fun yeah does that make sense and that makes sense and that's, just but, but that's, not, that's not anytime soon right now so probably anybody not. watching you right about now don't don't probably skip, not. you missed the, the whole of the first part of the interview and the end part of the year man talking about retirement nah. it's not anywhere nowhere near I haven't done that yet we've not done nothing yet you know what <laughs> So I clash down, you know, but she, I just no, don't know. you know, is there any, you know what, like, is there anybody in particular? And I'm gonna say this right because you know when some people, I don't like when people say when when you say, oh, um, if you have to clash any sound, who would you clash? And then people say, oh, I'll clash anybody. I'll clash anybody. <laughs> I don't like that because I, I don't know. It's like it's like being a man and saying, yeah. oh, what kind of. What kind of guy would you lie down with? Yeah, I'd like, lie down with any girl. Yeah, but there's a certain set of yeah. sounds who match your credit and you think. All right, because for me, yeah. sorry to cut you. Yeah, for me, I was super honest when I when I thought somebody was better than me. I had to beat them. Uh-huh. 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 When it was like the princes, the Yardy Ks, anybody, I just thought, nah, this is a problem here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I can't afford. To, to get in that, in that same yes. talk, conversation we're talking about about getting embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These men are good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've even got a. So that's the best way to answer it. Then I look at. It, I would answer that question from a um, almost aspirational perspective. Then yeah. in the sense of who I would list are basically the list of people that I rate as them man. They are the ones that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Fortunately, already there's one in the pipeline. That's Jimmy Spliff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's the, 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 and it's gonna sound. People are gonna sit and think, "Is this keys are going on around?" But I'm just being real about it. The Jamie Harks and the Polyfamous and the 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 Ajax and the friggin, do you get what I mean? Mm-hmm. The, um, and then when you look at it here, like, if Chalice was still active, active standard, does mm-hmm. that make sense? Mm-hmm. You have to give Jah Eyes his glory. Empire has to be in there, mm-hmm. like. Man that you can look at and go, yeah, you know what, you perform at a level still, you know. Yeah. And that's no disrespect to any yeah, no, 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 because, all, because but, but yeah. at the end of the day, like, I, uh, you, when you, alright then, it's like sport, innit? Anybody watching, anybody that loves sport, you know in your mind that you can't play football competitively against Steven Gerrard. Mm-hmm. But, as a fan, if you could play football well, and you had the opportunity to do it, you would want to be competitive against your idols. Eh? Yeah. Everybody, well, if you're an amateur boxer, you're gonna want to eventually have the title fight with AJ. Mm. Cause that's that's your goal. That's what you 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 believe in yourself. So that's the same perspective that I look at it from. Mm. Particularly in my position now, where I am in terms of as the man getting used to being the front man on the team, I know that my sound can compete, mm-hmm. but I have to be able to compete as the front man and the sound, so yeah. I'm looking there, that's the, mm. uh, that, the uh, Liam de Mille. Yeah, there. I just think there's just levels to it, man. Mm. The, and, and, and sounds should just be honest on what level they are. I, I'm not the biggest football fan, mm. but I'm, I watch football, mm-hmm. but I don't, that doesn't mean I'm going to watch Sunday League, <laughs> and I don't watch 
the, the champions. I, I watched championship, mm -hmm. premiership, mm -hmm. World Cup and Euros, mm -hmm. top teams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think there's certain sounds who are, that's who I want to listen to. And it's no disrespect to no other yeah, sounds. Yeah. You have a sound, you buy your dub, yeah. I understand it. Yeah, yeah. But it's just not for me. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And I think when sounds actually realise what level they're on and that it can be yeah. so much better because yeah. Yeah. It, will, it can become interesting yeah, yeah. when the, the matchup of the sound system is right. Is right. When it yeah, just yeah. not makes any sense at all. I Sometimes think I here, I think, I think here domestically, domestic. UK wise, I think it's a little bit more nuanced in the sense that we just need more domestic activity. Yeah. And when I say domestic activity, I mean like not this sound from down there and this sound from there and that sound from foreign. No. Mm. Just you two, yeah. and then next week it's them man from London, and then mm -hmm. next week it's them man from up north, and then yeah. next week it's them man from Badlands, and then next week it's like we need yeah, more domestic because yeah. then number one, people will get used to being competitive amongst each other. You'll then start to be able to see the tears more clearly because okay, yeah, them man they match up, and actually he's better than I thought he was, and whatnot, whatnot. So if we talk domestically, I have to use the cliche and say I don't need a business right now. Yeah. Middle business, mm -hmm. I don't actually care. UK wise, I'm confident enough in my own ability to be able to adapt to whoever it is that we're playing against. But mm -hmm. also, I know that the sound is capable of impressing with with anybody who it is that we're stringing up alongside. Mm -hmm. You can do your thing. I'll if you want to play up my sound, then it's alright. Come have yeah. something where you don't know what I'm have. So you do that. Mm -hmm. I'm still gonna do me, and I'm still gonna go on. Okay. So now it's about <laughs> what you're gonna do. Does that make sense? That's mm -hmm. how I look at it. Yeah. Me know what's my my shot then can still fire you fire anything you want fire i don't have you know <laughs> that i don't have to play out your box or worry about what you, you do mm. your thing when i do my thing you have to keep up speed mm. does that make sense yeah so and that's why i say like aspirationally that level in terms of like i said the jimmy spliffs and the that's where i see it i want to be mixing up in there yeah that, when audio drop and them when they play them audio do me i listen car i know exactly. i'm gonna get entertained yeah, yeah, yeah. i know i know mm. what standard it is so I want people to regard me like that. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's where I'm looking at it. We're going to wrap it up. There's got, I've got two more questions. And these are the first two um, questions that we're going to be putting to the sound man them on behind the boxes. Mm. Well, actually the first time I did it with foundation sound. Okay. Um, is, who is the artist that you would say you would have the most of in the ecstasy box? Not saying, Ooh. not some can't play this like me. Just the artist that you think, you know what? think if it, the top of the tree would be this artist? Um, I think if I think about it just practically, mm -hmm. it must be Bunty. Okay. It must be Bounty mm -hmm. Um And I don't even think it's by design either. I don't think like we sat and gone, we must have the most Bounty Killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You just, you, there's a point at which you're like, right, we got a lot, you know? Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's not killer, then it might be Capleton, to be honest yeah. with you. When I think, again, and this is just me okay. thinking about it, because mm -hmm. there's, there's, like, there's, there's what jumps out to you in your mind, but then mm -hmm. when you think about it practically and you actually think about the dubs that you've got from the artist, and this rhythm and that rhythm and that mm -hmm. single and this combination and that, it's between them two. Yeah, I from me listening, mm. I think you got the, some of the best Capleton dogs all around. I <laughs> swear down, and and f f and if you got more Bounty than Capleton, mm -hmm. you play more Capleton than you do Bounty. Okay, that's an interesting. If you listen to the, yeah, 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 there's barely any sounds in the UK. I'm being dead ass honest. Mm. That's clapping Capleton like you guys. We'll power every now and then we'll clap we'll, we'll box out some cable to yeah, cable yeah. to my artist still. Yeah. I just yeah, think yeah. I just think you can't go wrong. You can't you fire can't, man. And but this is And it doesn't get played enough. But I can't believe it. I like by default you should have a certain amount of certain artists uh -huh. because they just you how can you overlook that sound? Yeah. If a man call you and say, Yo, I might have this artist in our studio, you're taking at least four and it's gonna be these sounds. Yeah, yeah. And if you cut and you can do that. 20 times over, mm -hmm. four songs a time, and probably still have songs where you're like, right, did we even like that one, you know? Mm -hmm. That's get so it reflects what you've just yeah, said. Yeah, yeah. And Bant is the same. Then mm -hmm. when the catalogue, you could have the 50 songs that you've always wanted, and there's still another 50 that if you was to hear them, you'd be like, right, yeah, I'd take that one, you know? Mm -hmm. So just by 
by virtue of that, yeah, I'd have to say them. I know we mentioned some to, to Goli guys as well. Yeah. Rabble, the rabble. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The 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 strong man there still. So. Yeah, um, the last question. Can you tell me mm. and the audience as well that's listening mm. a specific funny experience, something that you'll always remember, whether it was with an artist or using the side of the studio or he was reasoning with an artist, something funny or something that was like just something that we'd be like, rah. Uh, for the one that, first one that springs to mind <laughs> mm. is when we first went to Harmony House, went to go and check Barry's or some tree. Okay. In, in up Stony Hill. And we got there, it's so chill. We got there and it was him and the um like the engineer and a couple of the bands. I think it was rehearsing or whatnot. And there's this like um because it's up on the hill, there's this like like I don't want to call it a balcony, it's like a level in it. It's outside of the house and there's like a level, it overlooks the, you can overlook Kingston and that and there's like a bar in it. But they're sitting down around this table mm. and we was, they must have been there for about 40 minutes, just chopping it up, we just got there. And Beres is sitting down, I saw the man, he smoked three cigarettes, he had a one drink that he was sipping and each one of the band's members then went round and he just sat on this draft table and just cleaned up everybody, just casually, just sat there, bam, gun, next, bam, gun, next, running all the same time, <laughs> yeah, yeah. done it, slew in the mouth. <laughs> oh, good man, don't come see that. Next time you go, come play with me, play better than that. Next man sit down, whap him there. And he just sat there, just casually, just like, Mm -hmm. And it was just, it was just I don't know it just one of the memories that always come back it was just a, it was a, obviously a joy to be there but he was mm -hmm. very cool very welcoming and it was just funny the banter that was flying around and the next man said oh you have to go now you know you have to go now you know father man I deal with you now you know, you know. <laughs> ten minutes pass and he's gone and the next man sit down and he's just sitting there just wow and so that just something that and then you go and voice those and then you go and voice some tune <laughs> and, crazy. You know what I mean? but yeah that's a little a little experience that it was it was just for it was just yeah. That's the only anecdote that I tend to tell after, mm. you know what I mean? Well, like I said, Zaino, honour and respect for you to come by TV Sound System. Don't know. It's going to be a fantastic year. It's been a fantastic year. I can see that 2025 is going to be yeah. off the chain. Jerk you know, and wine. Yeah, Jerk happening. and wine. So, big look out for Jerk and wine next year. Yes. That's, that's is there a date for it? There will be really announced very soon, yes. Okay. We have a date. It's locked in, obviously. Let promoter do his job in it. So yeah. when that's being released, it's being released. 100%. I know when it is, but it's in April. Mm -hmm. Before that, we got um, UK badness clash. We got Ben Ladin, so mm -hmm. ecstasy, third dimension with Mikey Notch. Yeah. Um, Snow White sound from um, New Jersey mm -hmm. and uh, Super Goal from Texas. That's hey, that's that's a, hey, hey, that's a lineup still. It's all right. Isn't it? Yeah. That's a, that, that is a good, good line. I'm going to put all the information up on the screen so everybody can know and we definitely will keep you posted with everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. Big shout out reach now to Zylo. He has to go because in a couple of hours it's going to be kickoff soon, isn't it? 4.30. Yeah. Looking like so we it. know uh, it's going to be, predict the score. I'm Spurs. I'm going to be super honest. I'm going to say draw. Do you a nice 2-2, two -two, I'm good. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I've, I've said I'm good I've, nice. I've said a brother Desmond as well Desmond two two <laughs> yeah I'm I'm going with I'm going with a Desmond as well I reckon it'll be a two two and I yeah. think we'll go behind then we'll go ahead mm -hmm. then you guys will claw it back we're gonna put the results at the end of the, at the end of the thing so once again like comment share subscribe anybody you want to big up before you out of course man big up Marky G big up Father Demo big up my brother Desi my brother Warren G see him. Young Jenna, a forward show, DJ Cairo, big of yourself. Um, and yeah, all the people who support us and show us love and you know what I mean? Anybody who's been to Jack and Wine and you know what I mean? Anybody who show we love, big up on yourself. See? It's a holy for people, so big up all around. Respect. Peace out.